Hi, in this video I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to use Power Map within MSXL. Uh, now Power Map within MSXL is not exactly the same thing as the map control within MSXL or uh, the map control within uh, reporting services. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly show you where you can download it. So you can say download Power Map for Excel if you don't already have it. And uh, you can just go ahead and click this one, this is Power Map Preview and uh, once you've installed it what you need to do next is you need to open up MS Excel you can obviously download it from here now in my case you'll notice that my Excel is actually a 32-bit version of Excel so uh, there's a limitation in terms of how much data I can put in uh, I've obviously got a lot of data here and as a result it'll be a bit slow but uh, for the purpose of this demonstration I think we should be okay uh, once you've installed Power Map what you need to do next is you need to activate that plugin so what you need to do here is you need to go ahead click uh, uh, file and then go to options and under options you have add-ins and under add-ins you have com add-ins and you press go over here you'll see you've got power map Microsoft power map you can also see I've got another one called Microsoft power map for Excel and uh, just go ahead check that and as soon as you check it you'll see that under the insert uh, ribbon over here you'll see one more option called map available uh, the next thing you need to do is you need to go ahead click map and say launch power map and uh, just to give you an idea about what I'm working with here uh, I've already gotten map installed for this one so I'll delete that and I'll just say new tour but before I do that I've got information about all the flights that have taken off from different cities in the US for the uh, calendar year 2014 and then the kind of delays associated with it such as uh, weather delay, carrier delay or late arrival of the aircraft delay and I've also got that bucketed by uh, the carrier United Airlines, American Airlines, etc. So this is the data that I got. Obviously what I need to do is once it's there in my Excel sheet I'll go into uh, Power Pivot and uh, I'll just select this entire table and I'll say Add to Model. And when I do that this model becomes part of the uh, Power Pivot query and through that becomes accessible to the map control. So that's already done here. So if you see here, I'll just go ahead and click Manage. And you'll see I've got the exact same data inside my Power Pivot. I've not added any measures or calculations here. It's just the basic um, uh, Power Map, um, Power Pivot data set. And once that's done, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click Insert. And I'm going to click Map. And I'm going to say Launch Power Map. And when I do that, in a few seconds, I'll get something that looks similar to Google Maps. And that's the difference between the map control that's there in Excel versus the map control that we have inside uh, Power Map. So just give it a second while it uh, launches. And the, the good thing about the Power Map control here, it's just launched, so let me just go ahead and open it up for you, is that it looks very similar to Google Earth. And it's very useful for representing data that's uh, very tightly coupled with uh, the geography but at the t same time you want to go ahead and add additional information to it you want to maybe view the data as it progresses over time things like that so uh, the first thing that happens here is you can see the screen that we have here we've got a map and you can see that we can interact with the map we can interact with the map even inside of uh, the uh, uh, Excel uh, map control but uh, there are some limitations in terms of to what extent you can interact. For example, here I can, you know, change the angle at which I'm viewing the map. I can uh, zoom in and zoom out, which we can even do in the other case as well. And we get a 3D kind of effect, whereas in the other case it's more of a flat map. As you can see here, we've got flat map here, right? So the first thing I want to do is every data point that I want to measure or I want to display becomes a layer. Just kind of similar to the layer that you'll have in things like Photoshop, etc and right now the first step is to identify the column that will be used to map or plot the position of the data on the map so you can see here we've got the geography and map level and I've got a column called origin city name and that's what's being used to represent the city and when I press next here at the bottom of the screen I can show flight information by checking flights and you'll see I get a legend here which I don't want to see at the moment so I'll get rid of that and immediately I'm seeing a 3D representation of the cities where the maximum number of flights uh, occur. So you can see we've got New York and Washington, then we've got Chicago and we've got Denver and Houston and uh, we've got Atlanta as well. But that's kind of expected because these are kind of major hubs for all the big airlines. Uh, however, you can also see that I can zoom in, zoom out uh, into this particular map control 
And the other thing I can do is I can drag and drop the flight date into this uh, time box that we have here. And when I do that, what happens is that I will actually get a representation of the data in terms of uh, the flights, in, so in, ter in, so in terms of the time. So if you see, I've got like a play button here at the bottom now, something that looks similar to your Windows Media Player maybe. And if I click the play button here, I'm not seeing the data as a final snapshot, but I'm seeing the data as it progresses over time. So you're actually seeing the count increasing from uh, the 1st of uh, 2000, uh, January 1st, 2014, over here, as you can see, and it'll go all the way till January 1st, uh, 2015. And I get to see the cities that are contributing to the airline traffic over a period of time. Now, in this case, I'm only representing one bit of data, which is the count of flights. So to kind of give you a more detailed analysis of this, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing how the weather affects delays. So what I would do is, in addition to plotting this information about the flights, I'm also going to go ahead and add another layer here by clicking this button here. And when I do that, again, I get the same box as before. So you can see I've got like the origin city and etc. all the other details just like before. And I press next over here. And then I've got a checkbox called weather delay. And when I check it, you'll see that again, I go through the same process of having a legend, etc. But in this case, I've got like a stacked column chart. If I zoom in, you'll see that uh, I've got like a, a stack over here where I've got like orange and blue. But the stack doesn't kind of represent the data the way I want it. So I'm going to go ahead. You can see we've got other types of visualizations here. We've got the heat map. So I'm going to select heat map over here. And when I do that, you'll see that the flights are now represented in orange. And uh, uh, this is the first layer. So let me just go ahead and choose the second layer. Yeah. The second layer is going to be my weather delay. So I'm going to select that. and I'm gonna s put the flight date as well in the uh, time component over here yeah and when I do that you'll see that uh, we've got the time aspect over here but it's not very clear about uh, you know unless you zoom in you don't really get to see the time get uh, the heat map for some of the regions so to increase the visibility of that I'm gonna click the settings button over here and when I do that I can increase the radius of the, um, I'm sorry, this is the, okay, I've actually uh, made the uh, the number of flights a heat map, so let me go ahead and change that really quick. So if I come here to layer 1, you'll see layer 1 is selected as a heat map, so I'm going to make that back to a column chart, and then layer 2, which is the weather delay, is what I'm going to use as a heat map. So I'm going to select heat map over here for weather delay, as you can see. And then for layer 2, I'm going to go ahead and increase the radius of influence. And when I do that, it's still the same amount of data, but we exaggerate the radius of the, uh, the heat map so that it's more clear and more visible. So now that this is done, I'm expecting that towards the beginning and towards the end, we're going to see a significant increase in the size of the bubbles or the size of the heat map because uh, January, February, uh, those are the times when, uh, you know, it's pretty cold and we have snowstorms and things like that. In fact, we have a pretty bad one going on right now. So uh, let me just go ahead and press play and let's see if that's actually true in this case. So you can immediately see that New York and Chicago and Atlanta uh, seem to be pretty badly affected by weather uh, over a period of time. And uh, that kind of correlates with what we see in real life as well. And you can see that uh, we don't seem to have that much of a problem with weather delays maybe towards the west coast. So let's just confirm that. So you can see here this is the west coast and you'll see that in the west coast the temperature doesn't fluctuate as much obviously. So we don't have as much weather delays in California and Los Angeles as we are in California and uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles areas uh, compared to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the east coast and uh, we don't even have that much in uh, Seattle as well. So this kind of gives us an idea about how we can use the map control to view a large amount of information uh, in a very clear and clean way using the map control and represent a lot of information that makes sense geographically. For example, weather obviously has a lot of uh, uh, relationship with the geography and similarly flight information seems to have a lot of correlation with uh, the city 
because some cities are major hubs and therefore they have larger number of flights and this is basically what I wanted to show you in terms of working with power map uh, it's extremely interesting to see the data plotted across a map because some of this information definitely does make sense when seen from a more bigger picture and uh, there are some really good looking maps out there in terms of response times for ambulances and things like that uh, I de definitely recommend that you check them out uh, by just googling power map query uh, power map uh, for Excel and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video this is just a quick uh, video demonstrating some of the concepts in power map and how 3d effects are really important uh, for certain charting controls and uh, for some other blogs that I'm doing right now where I'm talking about visualizing data the right way and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching